So I got this question. Gerard, I want to make this medieval ceiling, a Gothic, a Roman ceiling. Uh, how, should I do, how should I do this? I said, uh, well, I think I know how. So I made an example and he said, yeah, okay, nice. But I really would like to have it in a way that it's really a ceiling, not only from the bottom, but also from the top. And that was a nice challenge for me. So this video is about this challenge. How do I create a medieval Gothic or Roman ceiling as you see over here? So with this um, challenge, I started thinking about the shape. Uh, the inside is easy, the outside is a little bit more difficult. But to make everything more easy for me, I first designed this little jig. And actually, it's very simple. In this jig, I can shift a block of foam, I can cut it, and I can actually make a quarter part of this shape. So let me show you the first step is making uh, a quarter a quarter piece and then show you well the next step. So let's go. Got my proxen, got this little uh, template. It's a template. That's it. So uh, let's see. I want to have a block of foam to start with. A little bit thick, but that's okay. <coughs> I've got a foot pedal. Again, full, full power, a quarter twist back. And there we go. Okay. That's good. Okay. So the block isn't perfect. Uh, it will not fit perfectly. It's a little bit too wide. I will show you, it doesn't fit. And the reason for this is there is still one layer of coating on one side and I have to remove that one. So if it would fit straight away, I have coating on one side, which I do not want. So now I will adjust the fence and now, whoops. I hope it fits. As you can see, I'm eyeballing it. And let me see if it fits. It does. Okay, so I have my block. It fits into the jig and now I can cut the block into this gothic shape. I have a gothic shape. Um, this is the Roman one. Um, but since I show you this one, the gothic one, I will cut the gothic one. A little bit less heat. Looks nice. Make a twist or turn it. 
and there I have the inner shape of this goth gothic medieval ceiling. So the question was, can you make this ceiling? So I said to this guy, yeah, sure, here it is. And then he said, well, I also would like to have the top of the ceiling visible and in the same shape. And that's where it gets uh, more difficult. Uh, had to think about it, sorted it out. So let's transform this shape into that shape. Okay, next step. So here is a quarter piece of this ceiling. And the next question was, I really would like to have the top in the same shape as the bottom. So it really has to be an arch, not only from underneath, but also looking at it from the top. So that is the next um, challenge. Had to think for a while and yep, I know how. So I take my circular cutting board. In this case, I take the circular cutting board 2.0. I really have to because otherwise I cannot do it. I have here my uh, 90 degree angle. I will prepare it. And I will cut this quarter piece in two segments. Yep. So again, not too much, not too much heat. Have to fight my foot pedal and off we go. Okay. So we split this part in two equal segments and since we need four of these to create one full roof segment you end up with four of these splitting them so we have eight individual pieces like this okay next step in order to get this shape Also here, so we will actually create a curved ceiling. We need to peel off or cut off this part. And for me, there's only one way to do it. And that's using this little gadget, which is called the peeler. Um, I will do a short video about the peeler um, soon. But for now, this is the tool I'm working with. This is the thickness of my ceiling. So if this is the fence, the tube is my fence, then the wire should be here. So let's see if that's the case. Now, could be a little bit more to the rear. Okay, I think we are there. So, and now we have to see if it works. I hope so. Um, what I will do, I will have to follow this line. I will have to follow this curve and I have to turn this block around this tube so the wire will actually follow the curve I already cut. So let's see if it works. Let's see, here we go. Oh, foot pedal. I have to process in my mind the movement. Once I start cutting, it has to be a fluent cut without any hesitations. So 
I'm actually cutting it in my mind like okay I'm going in a certain direction and I really want want this to be perfect well perfect okay we will not cut anything out of this video because I think it's good to see that um, every now and then you really have to think things through and it looks really slick to make a vast video where everything happens all at once uh, but it's a process and now you see part of a process okay I'm set here we go so while I'm cutting I am turning this block Oh yeah. Okay, and here's number one. So now we try and do the other side. So if I put the block like this, that's the wrong way, obviously, because you see I'm having this little triangle or pyramid. But if I look, do it like this, you see I have an upright side. So this is the side I'm cutting. Now this side I cut first is uh, mirror, mirrored from this one. So this was done from my side towards the camera. This is mirrored, this uh, piece is mirrored so now I have to do it the other way which could be a little more difficult. Oh well, not that difficult. Okay, very nice. So this is the second piece. I will put this aside. And you see, if I put these two together. So here we have this quarter piece of the roof. One, two, three, four. And Sure, I can glue them together and I get this nice uh, shape. In this, um, in this uh, display piece, I left a part of this ceiling intact, meaning that you see there is a floor board. Um, to create that, um, I glue these two parts. Uh, and actually, if, if this is really um, what you where you want to uh, if you really want to work with a part like this you don't have to split it you don't have to make this strange curved uh, cut using the peeler um, but here you see for instance a part where I simply uh, cut off chunks and glued them on the curve and if you want to have a floor above, simply add a four or five millimeter layer of foam so you get rid of this cut. Again, if the whole piece is, isn't damaged, you, should, you could, can skip uh, the part I've shown you previously. Um, but again, um, okay, this is how it works. Now, if you have made this build and you didn't add uh, any texture yet, uh, that's perfectly fine. You can first make your build. It looks very crisp, very clean. And then you apply your grout lines and your uh, structure within the stones. Um, and for this, uh, you can uh, make some markers uh, where you want the lines to be. And if you do it on one side and on the other side, then you simply take your ruler and draw all the lines you need. Um, but there is another way to do it if you would like to do it up front, because that's also possible. Um, and just to show you another option. If I made this piece before I divide it in two sides and cut out the, uh, the outer shape, uh, I could also apply um, 
these lines or these marks by simply putting it back into the block. And as you can see, I measured out a specific pattern. So uh, actually, the only thing I, can, I could do here, or the thing I could do here, is simply transfer these marks onto the foam. And when I'm done, I flip the block and do it on the other side. So, again, I could actually finish this inner part uh, making the ground lines, texturing the stones, etc. etc. Or I say, no, I already made the marks. Now I will cut it in half, uh, I will glue it all together, but then I have the marks up front. I don't have to measure them afterwards and then I can make these, uh, these lines uh, rather uh, very quickly. So uh, again, that's another option. If you really would like to proceed with now drawing the lines, Again, that's not that's possible. No problem at all. Uh, let me do a quick part of this piece. So let's say here are the first three lines. So you go from the center to the side. Do the same here. So we have the first three lines. One a little bit deeper. And now I can uh, divide or uh, transform these lines into stones. So let's do this. And here you are. Uh, here the, you will cut the piece in two sides later on. Uh, and maybe just to show you uh, if I really want to go all the way, I will texture the, texture the stones. This is the uh, basic way for me to texture stones. Okay, so, uh, well, I, I did make a video about texturing and actually um, there is another very fun way to apply texture using um, uh, texturing cylinders. And I will do a video about the, those. Uh, and the fun thing is you can make them yourself very cheap. Uh, but um, yeah, that's something I will show you uh, very shortly uh, within the next couple of weeks. Okay, here is again uh, a little example of how it could look, um, just to give you an idea. And just to be honest, um, it's all done, um, it's all eyeballed, uh, but you also get a good idea how fast you can work uh, with a little bit of experience, two short pencils. But again, that you can also see in the structure of video. Okay, um, I think this is what I would like, this is what was planned and what I wanted to show you, how to make this uh, roof, this 
ancient roof. Fits perfectly in a monastery or chapel or church. Um, I will experiment, experiment more with this uh, type of uh, shape. Larger and uh, preferably smaller sizes. So um, I think I will be back with this, um, this shape for sure. Um, well, this wraps up the video for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you liked it um, and you're not subscribed, it would be so nice if you would do so. Uh, so thank you in advance. Um, keep on crafting, have a great day and see you soon. Bye bye. Ik ga door totdat je stopt, zegt.